Hi and welcome back. If you're a regular viewer to the channel, you know I'm very partial to oh, the odd cup of coffee. Um, you'll know that I drink regular coffee during the morning and early afternoon. And because of my sensitivity to caffeine, I have to switch to decaf in the late afternoon. It's now late afternoon and this is a pot of decaf. Um, I've looked at many studies and I've posted videos on many studies. None of them have actually looked at the difference between regular coffee and decaf until now. This one actually looks at regular coffee, instant coffee that we don't like, and also decaf. So enough waffling off me. Let's see what this latest study in the coffee and specifically cardiovascular disease has got to offer. This is a review of a study I read out of the American College of Cardiology that looked into three separate studies on the effect that coffee has on heart disease. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. Drinking coffee, particularly two or three cups a day, is not only associated with a lower risk of heart disease and dangerous heart rhythms, but also with actually living longer. This is according to the studies being presented at the American College of Cardiology's 71st Annual Scientific Session. These trends held true for both people with and without cardiovascular disease. Researchers said that these analyses, the largest to look at coffee's potential role in heart disease and death, provided reassurance that coffee isn't tied to new or worsening heart disease, but may actually be protective of the heart. Professor Peter M. Kissler, MD, head of arrhythmia research at the Alfred Hospital and Baker Heart Institute in Melbourne, Australia, said, because coffee can quicken heart rate, some people worry that drinking it could trigger or worsen certain heart issues. This is where general medical advice to stop drinking coffee may come from. But our data suggests that daily coffee intake shouldn't be discouraged, but rather included as part of a healthy diet for people with and without heart disease. We found drinking coffee had neither a neutral effect, meaning that it did no harm, or was associated with the benefits of heart health. Dr. Kissler and his team used data from the UK Biobank study, a large scale prospective database with health information from over half a million people who have been followed for at least 10 years. Researchers looked at varying levels of coffee consumption, ranging from one cup to more than six cups per day, and the relationship with heart rhythm problems, cardiovascular disease, including coronary artery disease, heart failure, and stroke, and total and heart-related deaths among people both with and without cardiovascular disease. So let's take a look at the cohort. The patients were grouped by how many cups of coffee they reported drinking on average each day. These groups were zero coffee per day, less than one cup per day, one cup a day, two to three cups a day, four to five cups a day, and finally someone who drinks more than five cups of coffee per day. Coffee drinking was assessed through questionnaires that were completed upon entry into the registry. Overall, they found either no effect or in many cases, significant reductions in cardiovascular risk. And this was after controlling for confounding factors that could also play a role in heart health and longevity, such as exercise, alcohol consumption, smoking, diabetes, and high blood pressure. For the first study, Researchers examined data from 382,535 individuals without known heart disease to see whether drinking coffee played a role in the development of heart disease or stroke during the 10 years of follow-up. The participants' average age was 57, half were men and half were women. The results, having two or three cups of coffee a day, was associated with the greatest benefit, translating into a 10 to 15% lower risk of developing coronary heart disease, heart failure, a heart rhythm problem, or dying from any reason. The risk of stroke or heart-related death was lowest amongst people who reported that they drank one cup of coffee a day. That said, researchers did observe a U-shaped relationship with coffee intake and new heart rhythm problems. The maximum benefit was seen among people drinking two to three cups of coffee every day.
The second study included 34,279 individuals who already had some form of cardiovascular disease. Coffee intake at two to three cups a day was associated with lower odds of dying compared to having no coffee at all. Importantly, consuming any amount of coffee was not associated with a higher risk of heart rhythm problems, including atrial fibrillation, AFib, or atrial flutter, which Dr. Kistler said is often what clinicians are concerned about most. Of the 24,111 people included in the analysis who had an arrhythmia at baseline, drinking coffee was associated with a lower risk of death. For example, people with AFib who drank one cup of coffee a day were nearly 20% less likely to die than non-coffee drinkers. Professor Kistler, the study's senior author, said clinicians generally have some apprehension about people with known cardiovascular disease or arrhythmias continuing to drink coffee. So they often err on the side of caution and advise them to stop drinking it altogether due to fears that it may trigger dangerous heart rhythms. But our study shows that regular coffee intake is safe and could be part of a healthy diet for people with heart disease. Dr. Kistler added, although two to three cups of coffee a day seem to be the most favorable overall, people shouldn't increase their coffee intake, particularly if it makes them feel anxious or uncomfortable. There's a whole range of mechanisms through which coffee may reduce mortality and have these favorable effects on cardiovascular disease. Coffee drinkers should feel reassured that they can continue to enjoy coffee even if they have heart disease. Coffee is the most common cognitive enhancer. It wakes you up, makes you mentally sharper, and it's a very important component of many people's daily lives. So how might coffee beans actually benefit heart health? Professor Kistler says people often equate coffee with caffeine, but coffee beans actually have over a hundred biologically active compounds. These compounds can help reduce oxidative stress and inflammation improve insulin sensitivity, boost metabolism, and inhibit the gut's absorption of fat and block receptors known to be involved with abnormal heart rhythms. In the third study, researchers looked at whether there were any differences in the relationship between coffee and cardiovascular disease, depending on whether someone drank instant coffee or ground coffee, or caffeinated or decaffeinated coffee. They found, once again, that two to three cups a day was associated with the lowest risk of arrhythmias, blockages in heart arteries, stroke or heart failure, regardless of whether they had ground or instant coffee. Lower rates of death were seen across all coffee types. Decaf coffee, however, did not have favorable effects against incident arrhythmia, but did reduce cardiovascular disease with the exception of heart failure. Dr. Kistler said, the findings suggest caffeinated coffee is preferable across the board, and there are no cardiovascular benefits to choosing decaf over caffeinated coffee. As always, there are a few limitations that we need to consider before we make a final decision. Researchers were not able to control for dietary factors, such as processed foods, such as cookies and cakes, and these do play a role in cardiovascular disease, and I think a very important role. Nor were they able to adjust for the use of creamers, milk, or sugar. Again, something that I believe is very important indeed. Also, coffee intake data was based on self-reported questionnaires. The data from these type of studies are often open to flawed data being recorded. Participants are guessing and or over or under reporting. So most of the studies I've covered concerning coffee with regard to longevity and health have come up with about the same recommendation of around two to four cups a day. This number seems to be beneficial for all types of medical conditions from cardiovascular disease to Alzheimer's. But what do the official organizations say? A quick search on Microsoft Bing came up with this from the FDA and the Mayo Clinic. 400 milligrams a day seems to be the agreed limit. The FDA say that's four or five cups a day and the Mayo Clinic say that's roughly four. Of course, there are so many variables when it comes to brew strength and cup size, it would be difficult to state a single number when it comes to how many cups per day. 
So although we can generally agree that drinking coffee has tangible benefits, unless you drink too much too late in the day and it affects your sleep, the actual size of the cup is still a mystery. So if you buy from a regular coffee shop, it's 400 milligrams, one small, two medium or three large cups. It may be difficult to find out how many milligrams of caffeine your local coffee shop has in its small, medium or large cups. And small, medium and large mean different things in different places. And if, like me, you have four or five preferred providers of coffee, you need to carry around a small record to find out or to record how much caffeine is actually in each cup. Well, I hope you found that interesting or informative. Uh, if, like me, you're a coffee drinker, I also hope you found it helpful. I've made some notes. So this study appears to be building on all the previous studies I've made videos about, which is two to three, two to four cups of regular coffee a day seems to be optimal. Um, what I didn't like about this study was the lack of taking into account confounding factors such as overall diet and then also what some Philistines add to their coffee in the way of creamers, milk and sugar. Um, I still drink between two to four cups of coffee, regular coffee in the morning and early afternoon and then I switch to decaf late afternoon and evening. I might have one or two, maybe three cups of coffee. Sometimes I'll add to that whipping cream, which I think the Americans call heavy cream. Um, that's it for today. I'd be interested to see your comments on this. Have you either increased or reduced your coffee intake based on the information I've given over the last couple of videos to do with coffee? Um, and if you don't drink coffee, are you thinking about uh, introducing coffee into your diet or your longevity protocol? Well, that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. I look forward to seeing your comments about this in the comment section. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon. Bye for now.